Taurus! Welcome to your general tarot scope for the first half of November. And this is going to be until the 14th when there is a full moon in your sign. So there's some sort of door closing in terms of something about you, your life, your image. Maybe you're going to change the way that you look. And this is like you're saying, I don't want this anymore. So this would be like a self-improvement thing. This could be actually your physical appearance that you decide that you're going to change things up. Um, but it's like you've resolved to do this. So the other thing too, you know, is you might be in the spotlight with the moon in the first house. With the full moon in the first house, you might just be... Um, everybody, all eyes are on you for whatever reason. So there might be some reason why um, you're in the spotlight and that could be very cool. So maybe there will be, it's, it, you know, it's funny because when the, the full moon is in the 10th house, it could be some kind of career acknowledgement, but this is more about you as a human being. Now, every time there's a full moon, there's an opposition with the sun going on. So while the full moon is in your sign, your seventh house is getting activated with um, the sun there. So this is kind of like, maybe you're going to come to some understanding about yourself when it comes to relationships and what your needs are. Um, Taurus tends to be a sign that is pretty accommodating of a partner. And so maybe you've been a little bit too accommodating and maybe this other person has overstepped their boundary um, or, or your boundary or somebody's boundary <laughs> and uh, really is trying to, you know, be the one that is the, the uh, person in the relationship that is supposed to be the, the most important one. And, you know, with that full moon in your sign, you kind of are reminded that you are a person too. I'm not saying everybody's going to experience this, but that might be one of those revelations which the moon, the full moon can bring. Um, by the way, this is, I'm just telling you a few things before I put out the cards. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say too is that Venus is going to be going into your ninth house on the 11th. So that means until that time, you know, until the 10th of the month, it's going to be in your 8th house in Sagittarius, um, which is the natural house of Scorpio, the 8th house. And this can be something to do with getting money from um, the dead. I mean, really, it could be an inheritance issue where you actually get the money. There were other transits that I think support this because I actually have uh, Taurus rising. So I follow, you know, the transits of Taurus. And so this could be some developments in that area. Mercury is also going into your eighth house the very next day. So you could be, you know, signing contracts or discussions involving other people's money or resources. And when Venus goes into the ninth house, this might be an indication that you can meet somebody traveling or from a foreign culture. Um, it also bodes well for PR work. Um, I, well, I'm talking about advertising and um, publishing, but also for, and that could bring money with it if, if you're connected to that. But anything with higher learning and religious studies and just um, the way that you look at life, you know, you may, you know, feel good about something that uh, maybe you make peace with with in a, a certain concept, you know, philosophical construct. And uh, maybe you realize that that can actually bring you a peace of mind, so to speak. And uh, the other trance that I wanted to tell you about is happening around the same time, the 8th or the 9th, when Mars transits into Aquarius. So that actually is going to be your 10th house of career. Mars will be in the ninth house 
until that date, until the 8th, so for probably about the first week of the month, it'll be in, in your uh, ninth house. So, you know, some of you may actually be doing uh, some heavy-duty traveling, and maybe you'll end up meeting, you know, having a romance after that time. But um, then Mars goes into that 10th house, and you're all about your career. So you're very ambitious. Even for those people who aren't, aren't currently working, you're going to be contacting employers, trying to get, um, you know, recognition, um, doing things to advance yourself, I mean. So, yeah. So it sounds like a very interesting uh, two weeks that are ahead of us. I always put these cards too close together because I used to not be able to get the cards in the frame and now that I've solved that problem I'm still putting them too close together that you know I'm sorry it's so dark it's like such a gloomy day and I don't I, I I'm not complaining about it because because I love overcast days but um, it's interesting about light you know starting to film things you learn that there are different types of light and I really don't want to turn on I don't have like a per, um, a specific light for film so um, you know for filming so I would have to just turn on you know one of those lights that makes everything seem so yellowish and I just I'd rather have the the washed out quality than that so wow that's wonderful. Okay. So this is the overall energy dilemma situation. Two of Wands. This is a card. This could actually be about you pondering moving or pondering some choice that you have to make. Sometimes this could be, you know, with a career, there's like two offers. Um, but it could be in personal relationships. It could be two people. Um, let me just keep going and I'll figure this out. In the recent past, we have the Knight of Pentacles. And this is about somebody who's very, um, you know, driven to work. So it is possible that some of you have been really busting your tail in a job that you've been doing and maybe it's it hasn't paid off and so you're thinking about it or it could be as some of those transits that I have talked about suggest maybe you are going to get a um, promotion but you have to travel and you're not sure you want to do that being a creature of habit as you are you may want to you know stay put but you know you're holding that globe I'm gonna see if I, I've been having fun just doing the zoom feature. You have that globe, you're holding the world in your hands, you've got the whole world in your hands, and it's like, yeah, you know, and that could actually be about, that's why it's about travel, it's like traveling the world, you know, the the broader perspective. In personal relationships, you may be dealing with, um, it's possible that you're dealing with, um, between a fire sign and and a, and, a, um, and an earth sign individual. So the earth signs would be another Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, and the fire signs are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, what could be going through your mind if that is the scenario? And if that is, I'm going to, that, you know, because that's pretty exact. But, you know, there are, the odds are that somebody's dealing with something along those lines just by the sheer numbers of people that are watching. So maybe I shouldn't be too surprised. But um, that dynamic or that scenario that you may be having may be that um, pentacles, the earth signs, are very stable and very much like you. Now, if it's a fellow 
I think it could be a Capricorn because we have this, and this is connected with Capricorn. But, um, the you know, they are kind of like wired as you are. So you have certain things in common. You're seeing the world from the same perspective. Um, the difference is that or the, the problem or the conflict that might come up is that in your individual chart, you may have, let's say you have a lot of fire or you have a lot of air. So you may be atypical for a Taurus person. You may be more cerebral or you may be more uh, passionate. You know, earth is dry, you know, so it tends not to be emotional. It tends to be very grounded, you know, which it is the ground, you know, the earth. And... So it's, you know, you may have a very predictable, comfortable life with that person because they're also about their career and about their money and all that stuff. But then you might be feeling like you're missing something else. You might be missing the passion that the fire sign person provides. But then with the fire, part, fire sign person, you may feel like they are too... Um, unpredictable and maybe not something you can count on therefore and you may be kind of like uh, also feeling that they're a little bit too dramatic for you and that you want something that isn't so um, you know um, chaotic it, well it's, it's not necessarily chaos but it can be very much a sense of um, you know, too much drama in the relationship. Oh my goodness, it's so dark. I, I hope this even picks it up. You know, and I'm sure there's some setting. I tried to, to set it, and I don't know exactly which one to, to use, so I do apologize for that. Um, as I said, it's an atypical day. It's very dark. But um, in any case... you may be kind of like, what should I do? And the, the, the this is more of a, kind of a confirmation of what we're dealing with here, the devil card. Now, the devil can deal with compulsive behavior, addiction, and you're being tempted, either you, it could be that somebody else has an addiction, but it could be that you're being tempted into a certain relationship because it's providing you with something. Now, um, it could go either way. Um, as I say, overall, most earth signs are going to have more of an affinity for one another than uh, with a, a fire sign individual. Um, that's a total gross generalization, obviously. But um, maybe with the fire person, there is sexual uh, fireworks going on. And that is what the devil card, maybe it's saying it's very hard for you to get away from that relationship because there is a pay payoff and the payoff comes in the form of this, you know, hot sex relationship. But it's other than that, it isn't much of a relationship at all. So I don't know if that is uh, true of many people. And, you know, the same thing applies for the, um, the job front, you know, um, if you're choosing between two jobs, one may pay more, but the other one is more fulfilling to you, and that creates a bit of conflict within you. Because, you know, Taurus loves the nice things of life. They love, um, they're very sensual people. Sensual meaning, um, a, you know, a person of the senses. I actually got this card, which is the Empress card, and that's associated with, you can barely see it, but it's there, and that's associated with being a person of the senses. Okay, so um, the higher message is uh, the Justice card. So yeah, some people who are in a marital situation, maybe um, that's who, you know, when you're choosing between two people, that is kind of like going along with that, that that's going to be, you're going to have to um, do something legal about that to kind of tie up the loose ends. If you're, if you're trying to, you know, deal with a bad marriage by cheating, um, it's better to just 
go your separate ways and then you'll be able to um, you know have a fresh start instead of having this baggage you know um, but it could just be about fairness because um, this is a higher message so it's almost like a spiritual lesson where you know whatever is happening um, is happening for a reason um, you may have you may feel like you're in a job that you don't feel like uh, you tried and tried uh, worked very hard and maybe you just don't feel that sense of accomplish or not accomplishment but that you're getting recognized and that may cause you to to feel like you want to leave but the devil card I think is kind of like um, you know, maybe kind of pointing you in what is really happening because with the Knight of Pentacles, it could be something where, um, like with somebody's career, where they're just like nose to the grindstone and they're just like in that mode of work, 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 but they're not really, you know, our lives are not just, that's not what we're here just to just go to work every day and do that. I mean, yeah, we have certain things that we do and there's a reason behind them but when people are so focused on that and 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 the king of Pent or the knight of pentacles is about amassing money you know wanting that financial security but when you get so much into that rut which it can be that you're not seeing the bigger picture of life that to me is um a symbol of the devil card of being you know, really um, living a one-dimensional life. And that is a form of being too materialistic, you know. And, and the devil card can definitely refer to materialism, you know, over-materialism. And that also relates to the body, you know, being too over, uh, overly body conscious. And in also with relationships, um, if you cons consistently choose somebody based on how they look versus whether or not you get along, um, that may show a pattern that can lead to unsatisfying uh, outcomes in relationships. So the justice card could mean that, you know, something is either fair if you thought it wasn't fair or that you're going to have to seek that avenue for whatever it is that's going on what crosses you and this is kind of funny because I got this I just got this one the the ace of wands which I'm reading as a reverse card because it's challenge and it could be that um, you are trying to start something and it seems like you can't get it off the ground and um, you know, you may be going through a transition because you have that full moon in your sign. So something may be ending that's connected to you. And maybe you're so focused on, oh my God, I want this thing to happen, this new thing to come in, that you're not like, you know, flowing with the cycles of life. And it's not to say that this thing isn't going to happen. It's just going to happen on its own, on its own time. Oh, you know what's really cool? I don't know if you've noticed, but um, the, the, it's starting to get a little bit lighter. And so you see that everything is more illuminated now. And this can also be for any kind of personal relationship. So if you are choosing between two people and one of them is a fire sign, that relationship may, you know, hit some snags for whatever reason. The timing is off. Um, the... Advice is the Empress card. Now, this is the one that I propose. It's funny. I just did another reading where I said that I disagree vehemently with um, the Hierophant being attached to Taurus, and I think it should be Sagittarius. And I propose that the Empress be Taurus and not Libra. Because to me, this is an Earth Mother energy, so why wouldn't it be, and it's associated with Libra, and Taurus is ruled by Libra. So is, so <laughs> I keep saying Libra. I mean Venus. This is a, you know, the Empress is connected to Venus. And it's also connected to Libra. So why shouldn't it be 
um, Taurus if it's an Earth Mother energy. But this is your advice card. So it's really about um, creativity. And um, if you're in a relationship with somebody and you're not like, and your eggs haven't dried up yet and you were planning to have kids, um, it may be, that may be the best way to go about deciding if you, especially if like you have two people to choose from and say, and, and if you do want to become a mother and say, which one of these people is more conducive for me becoming a mother? And, you know, to an extent, you could say a father, too. It can be just a nurturing parent. Which one of these people is going to get me to that goal uh, more in a more likely manner? And that might give you a hint about who is the person for you. You know, sometimes people do say that they have to choose between two people and they don't know who to choose. I always find that kind of strange because I wonder if they are engaged with either one very deeply because I, people are so individual, individualistic, that I can't imagine being that torn between two human beings in terms of who you want to have a relationship with unless... You're not engaging either one on a very deep level. And so, I mean, people should be so, um, they're, you know, special to you that you either know or you don't know which one is the one for you. And maybe, you know, I could see not thinking that a certain person is the one that you should commit to. But between two people, it would seem that you would know which one is a better fit. And if you can't really tell if you're really on the fence, then they're probably neither one are. You're probably just not that into either one of these people. The Earth Mother energy is also about, it's, a, it's about embracing the part of life that is very um, sensual. But this is something that Taurus naturally does. So as advice, it could be that, you know, maybe you are uh, being very pragmatic about a situation. And this could be even with your work life where, um, you know, you're focusing so much on something based on how much money it is. Now, of course, money, you could say, is that sensual? But I think in terms of creativity. So it's something that, where you you feel like you are investing of yourself and your soul. Um, you know, your creativity is an expression of your soul. And it's not the same as if I had pulled a cups card. This is more of a energy that, you know, the Empress represents, where you are, and you are like um, associated with art anyway, being a Taurian and being ruled by Venus, you know, there's that natural affinity. Um, you know, which art forms? Well, I think it's fairly common to note that a person with a prominent Taurus can, can be a good singer. You know, it rules the throat, Taurus. So music, by extension, can be really something that Taurus people like. So maybe you have always wanted to um, be in the music field, but you've kind of, you know, thought, oh, that's, that's not going to pay the bills, and this thing is. Maybe you need to look into that, and I'm not saying that you need to quit your day job or anything like that, but maybe that's something that will bring you closer to where you want to be in your life in general, because I feel like the more we follow our bliss in whatever area it is, the more we align ourselves with what we what we love in life because we're generating positive vibes. Uh, and sure enough, uh, the outcome is the Wheel of Fortune. So this is like a new wonderful cycle for you. And um, that can really... Um, yeah, and actually I was, I was trying to think about Jupiter because this card connects to Jupiter. Jupiter is in the sixth house uh, for you for the next year. So that's the house of work. Now, as opposed to the 10th house of career, it may be at work 
you know, it's kind of like what this guy likes to do. He just likes to roll up his sleeves and get down to work. So maybe, I was going to say, it might even be grunt work if you're starting your own business. And this could actually be that, you know, because it's creativity. So maybe that's something that you need to do. And that's what that card is representing. Um, but um, I think that you have the opportunity with Jupiter in this house to really um, transform your daily routine expand it, which Jupiter does and brings luck to this area. And, you know, you may get a lot of work, but it may be a lot of work that you have to put into it to launch too. I mean, there's always that possibility. But the, but the point is, is that if you launch a business, maybe that will be a good, good time during the next year to do so with Jupiter in that house. And um, you may have more work than you know what to do with, because that's what that transit can bring as well. But whatever happens, there's a sense of, you know, you benefiting from that work and benefiting from your daily schedule and your health. So that could be, you know, there could be good things in different um, uh, areas, but you are on an, on, um, an upswing Taurus and so that's good whatever is happening and uh, so good luck to you and if you enjoyed this reading and you'd like a personal reading please click on the link below otherwise have a great first half of November bye